Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I'm making a video to do a bit of a roundup of everything that I made during 2021. This video is going up a little bit later than I had hoped, um, but it is still January and for me January is very much a month where I enjoy kind of looking back on what happened in the year before and looking forward to the year ahead and kind of making plans and resolutions and all that good stuff. So what I'm going to do today is just run through everything that I made during 2021. I'll put some photos up on the screen so that you can see everything. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy kind of having a bit of a summary of everything I made. At the end I'm going to then talk in a bit more detail about kind of overall themes of how I felt my 2021 sewing went and my kind of resolutions for my 2022 sewing. So first up, the very first thing that I made in 2021 was a Deer and Doe Myosotis dress and I made it in this lovely Harpy Feathers viscose crepe that I bought from Sister Mentaka. This was actually the second Deer and Doe Myosotis dress because I made a leopard print one at the end of 2020. And as you'll see through this, the Myosotis dress I think was very much the dress of 2021 for me because I made quite a few more. The second thing that I made was a Geordie bralette by Emerald Erin. I used the kit and it was a success in that the making process went really smoothly but it didn't fit, it's too small. And I did then have a play around with making some other toiles um, to try and get the cup fit right and I never quite got there to be honest and I kind of got distracted with other sewing projects and I let my kind of underwear sewing ambitions take a bit of a back seat so I'm hoping that I'll pick that up again this year and maybe make a bit more progress in my quest to learn to make nice underwear. The third thing that I made was actually using up some leftover fabric from my very very first Myosotis dress and I used this viscose um, this leopard print viscose from Rainbow Fabrics to make a V8772 blouse. I was so pleased with this blouse because I really took the time to get the fit right and you know made adjustments to the pattern. I also lengthened it so it could be more of a, a blouse that kind of covers my bum. I wear it either on its own, I can wear it buttoned right up to the top for more of a preppy look, I can wear it with a few buttons undone, or I can even wear it open as more of an overshirt over like a strappy top or something underneath. I really like this make, I've worn it a lot and I hope to make more similar items in the future. The fourth thing that I made was the By Hand London Hanna wrap top. I made this in a viscose linen that I got from Lamazi Fabrics and it's lovely. I really feel nice when I wear it but it's not the most comfortable thing to wear. I didn't really account for the fact that viscose linen sort of gives a bit as you wear it. I'm not an ironer, I don't iron my clothes before I wear them. So when it's fresh out the wash, it's a bit smaller, and then when it's been on your body for a few hours, it sort of loosens. So it is a little bit big for me. Um, at some point in the future, I would like to make another one with a fabric that doesn't have that sort of give in it. Next I made, well, I say I made, I finished the Sew Over It Chloe coat. Um, this is in an X designer wool that I bought from Fabrics Galore and apparently it's an X barber wool. Um, I started making this coat years ago so I'm really pleased that I finally finished it but I can definitely tell that it's a garment that I started years ago because the fit is not quite right, the sleeves are not quite right I'm really glad I finished it but I haven't worn it that much so I really need to learn from that and think about avoiding making any more coats in the future that don't get worn. Ultimately it's just not a really cosy snuggly coat and that's the kind of coat I like to wear. I like everything buttoned up to my chin, really thick with you know layers underneath and yeah it just I haven't quite found the way that it fits into my wardrobe to wear it regularly but um, yeah, maybe that can be a goal for this year is to find different ways to wear it so that I wear it more often. The sixth thing that I made was a pair of lander pants. So this is the um, True Bias lander pants or lander pants. And I made them in this petrol cotton twill from Sew Me Sunshine. It's a Robert Kaufman cotton twill. These were a real labour of love. I spent a long time learning about trouser fitting, making multiple twirls, really playing around with kind of the shape of the crotch curve at the back because I wasn't happy with the kind of extra fabric that I had under my bottom when I first finished these. And I had quite a critical view of them for a while, even once I'd finally kind of decided that I'd got the fit as good as I could get the fit. Um, 
so I haven't worn them that much but now that I'm looking back at the photographs of them I actually like them and I think they're a much better fit than I originally gave them credit for. I do need to let the hems down because I made them a little bit short but luckily because I've not worn them that much there shouldn't be any kind of mark where the hem has been. I think I can just let that down a few centimetres, they're a bit longer. And ultimately I have got in the back of my head that if I still don't find outfit combinations that I enjoy including these trousers this year then I could always chop them off and turn them into a pair of shorts. So a mission for this year is to get more wear out of my True Bias uh, lander pants. A top that I've had loads of wear out of this year is the True Bias Nico top that I made in this blue ribbed knit fabric which originally came from myfabrics.co.uk but I made this top actually with some leftovers. I think I originally made, yes, the Tilly and the Buttons Freya top with this fabric and I had a chunk left over that I managed to squeeze this top out of. It's the sleeveless version, it's got the little neck band and it's like a little cropped top. I've worn it loads, it's just the perfect thing to put on with a pair of high-waisted jeans and you know be dressed still quite casually but feel like I'm wearing something nice. All it takes is a nice pair of earrings and a bit of lipstick and I feel a little bit more um, you know ready for you know casual evening out. Um, I really like this top and I would like to make more of these because it's a style that I just feel really good in. Next I did a little alteration project. I altered my viscose linen cropped trousers that were a hack of the new look 6446 trousers. Um, I've always worn these quite a lot just because they're one of the only sort of summery pairs of trousers that I have but they've always been too big. Again it's the thing with viscose linen is it gives so yeah they kind of become bigger after a few hours of wearing them so I needed to take them in for a few years I finally got around to it I'm so pleased that I did I really need to just force myself to or find a way to encourage myself to do more alterations I was really good with alterations in 2020 kind of let it slip a bit in 2021 because honestly to just take an hour or two to just fix that niggle with a particular garment all of a sudden makes it so much more wearable and so much enjoyable to wear so I definitely want to do more alteration projects in 2022 to make sure that I'm getting the wear out of my clothes. The ninth sewing project that I completed was my Olivia One Piece swimsuit and I made this in some dead stock swim fabric that I bought from the New Craft House. I wore this on holiday, this is the first time that we managed to get out of the UK since the pandemic and we went on a holiday to Croatia, it's me and my husband, and I wore this swimsuit and I'm really pleased with it. I think the fabric, I, some people will think it's a complete granny pattern but I really like it, I think it goes well with my colouring. Um, this actually is something that I need to alter because I didn't put enough tension on the elastic that's in the back of like of the bottom so the bottom is not quite as tight it like is slightly loose and nobody wants a loose swimsuit because that's that could end really badly so I do need to get my own picker out get back into the guts of it and reinsert the elastic just around the like the back of the leg hole so I'm going to do that this year and make this swimsuit more wearable, but I'm really pleased with it. I do want to make another version in the future that actually doesn't have quite such a high hip. I love the high hip look on other people, but I actually have really narrow hips and I think that high hip look looks lovely when you've got slightly fuller, curvier hips because I'm just a little bit straight up and down, so I think it would look nicer on me if I were to lower the hip a little bit, um, so I'll do that for my next version. Project number 10 was a Liberty Tana Lawn that I used to make a V8772 blouse. This project is a complete success. I, again, I'd made a V8772 before, the leopard one that I mentioned earlier, um, but this was making it in a completely different fabric because a cotton lawn or, you know, Liberty Tana Lawn has got much more structure than the floaty viscose that I made my leopard print one in. So any fit issues will always show much more in something like a cotton compared with something like a viscose. Um, so there are some tweaks that I'll make to the fit for another version. I've actually already got some more to Liberty Tunnel Lawn lined up to make another one. But other than tiny fit issues, it's just slightly tight across the front. There's just the slightest drag lines from my shoulder towards my bust. 
I think maybe my bust adjustment, my small bust adjustment was a little bit too extreme. I maybe need to just give myself a little bit more space in there. Um, but this has been such a successful make because I've worn it loads. I've been wearing it to work, obviously during the parts of the year where we could go to work and that we weren't working from home. And I just love it, worn with a pair of high-waisted smart trousers for work, with a little jumper over the top, with the collar sticking out is another way I like to wear it. I've worn it lots and it's great. I just feel, yeah, I feel smart, but I also feel like it's a nice, you know, good colour, nice print. It's a good, good staple make. Project number 11 is this red sheared dress. I finally jumped on top of the sheared dress trend, which has been around for a couple of years now. And I used the tutorial on the By Hand London website for some hints and tips on how to do shearing. And I also used a video from the Stitch Sisters to learn about shearing. And I'm so pleased with this dress. I managed to squeeze it out of just one meter of viscose linen that I bought several years ago from Sew Me Sunshine. It hasn't had that much wear because for me this is a, a hot weather dress, a summer holiday dress. I'm not ever going to wear this dress unless it's at least 25 degrees. So I wore it on our holiday in Croatia and absolutely loved wearing it and it is one of those ones I think that will just come out and get packed every time that I go on holiday somewhere warm and it'll also be worn every time the sun comes out here in the UK. Project number 12 is one of my favourites of the entire year. I loved making this so much. This is another um, Deer and Doe My Sotis dress um, and it, I hacked it a bit. So I made the skirt much longer and I made it in this gorgeous ink blue viscose chalet fabric from Minerva. I absolutely love this dress. It was a real departure from my normal style to make something that's long, like I've never really worn maxi length dresses before, um, but I wore it lots during the summer in the UK and when we were on holiday and I got lots of compliments on it and it's so nice to wear. The viscose chalet fabric is so lovely and soft and drapey and wafty and yeah, I love it. This is definitely gonna get a lot more weather a lot more wear, a lot more wear every time we've got, you know, some nicer weather. And actually, because it's a maxi dress, I do have plans to buy like some cycling shorts or like some three quarter length leggings or something. So that even on days when it's a l not quite full blown summer weather, I could sneak some layers underneath because you can't see because it goes all the way down to my ankles. So that's the plan. I, I'm always cold. I can't wear floaty summer dresses unless it's really warm. So thinking about how I can layer things is always important for me. Project number 13 and 14 kind of go together because these are, I made a bikini basically. So I made the Edgewater Avenue Ranger Bottoms and the Edgewater Avenue Alley Top. If you've not heard about this pattern, um, this pattern designer and you are interested in sewing swimwear, definitely check her out. The web, the brand is called Edgewater Avenue and there are lots of like videos and stuff on Instagram to help and she's just got so many patterns loads and loads of fun patterns they all come with or most of them come with different levels of coverage in terms of your bottom and I just think they're great they're not very expensive and there's loads of styles to choose from and I made these in a leopard print swim fabric from Minerva um, it was all leftovers from other projects I've made two other sets of swimwear with this same fabric and yeah I really like them the only the bottoms are perfect really enjoy wearing them the top I made too small it was too tight but actually sneak peek of what I've made this year I've actually already remade the top this year it was the, literally the first thing I made in 2022 because I had a girls spa weekend and I wanted to wear it I just sized up and made another one and it fits so much better so this is a successful make and I'm really hoping that 2022 will involve more opportunities for swimwear because I will be wearing this bikini again. Project 15 was another Deer and Doe My Sotis um, related project. This time it was a bit of a mashup slash hack and this one was actually more based on the By Hand London Eloise dress. So the bodice shape all comes from the By Hand London Eloise dress but the rest, the skirt and the ruffle at the bottom is all you know, hacked from the Deer and Doe Myosotis dress and I made this dress in a tensile lawn from Lamazi Fabrics. Again, it's another 
maxi dress, full length, swooshy ruffles, um, really inspired by how much I enjoyed wearing the first, the you know, the ink blue one that I showed you a few minutes ago. Love it. Really enjoyed wearing it on holiday. Again, it's a summer dress, it's a holiday dress, a hot weather dress, but I will be getting lots more wear out of this over the years, every time the sun shines. Project 16 is actually not a dressmaking project, but still a sewing project, so I thought I'd mention it. But I've been halfway through making a footstool for mine and my husband's living room since we bought this flat, which was four years ago. <laughs> and it's just been half made. Um, it's literally a piece of MDF with some legs that I bought from eBay drilled into the bottom. And then I bought some upholstery foam cut to size and some fabric. And the fabric's just been wrapped around it for four years. I finally finished it and I properly, you know, I got the staple gun out and I had a go at kind of upholstering it and it's a bit messy if you look underneath but I was really pleased to finally have a go. I've watched so much of Escape to the Chateau where Angel is always just upholstering things. I've been desperate to have a go and I'm really pleased I finally finished it. Next I made another like living room foot item I made a poof well I say poof I've not got a picture of it actually because it's not quite finished yet it's finished I finished sewing it it's a poof that I made with leftover fabric from the footstool actually this green cord fabric and I ad adapted the closet core patterns poof or footstool pattern I think it's free on their website and I'm using it I'm stuffing it with scraps fabric scraps so every time I've got fabric scraps that are too small to use for anything I will use my rotary cutter and just chop them up into little bits and put them inside this poof it's not quite full enough yet for it to look good it's still a little bit squishy so give me a few more months and eventually it'll be nicely stuffed with scraps and it'll be yeah somewhere else to rest our feet I made napkins which is a thing that's been on my list for a long time because I'm trying to get away from as many sort of disposable items in life in general and replace them with reusable items and I made some lovely um, dark blue napkins using a lovely European um, linen that I bought from Ray Stitch and I made them using the tutorials on the By Hand London website and there's a tutorial specifically about making napkins and there's a more detailed tutorial specifically teaching you how to make mitered corners um, and I'm really pleased with them it's great to finally be able to just have them on rotation I made 12 so that I can always have some being used some in the wash etc okay final three guys we're nearly there um, I made another My Sotus dress hack. Um, this time I used the My Sotus dress and I hacked it to be a fitted dress. The My Sotus is designed to be loose and floaty. I usually add waist ties to cinch it in, but this time I wanted to actually make it a fitted dress. But I love the neckline of the My Sotus, which is why I don't just go to another pattern for a fitted dress because I want to retain that neckline and the collar and everything. And I used this black floral um, viscose that I bought from Lamazi Fabrics and it's gorgeous I love it it's again it's long I put proper cuffs on it again it's all quite hacked I used the sleeve from the V8772 pattern that I'd hacked to be like a balloon sleeve with a proper cuff on it um, and I really like this dress it's again quite a new style for me but I wanted to make something with that I could wear with black tights that I could wear to work potentially with the right outfit and um yeah, really like it. The penultimate thing I made was a set of Harry Potter robes for my nephews. My nephews are now five and three, and they've discovered Harry Potter, obviously only the early books, because I think the, old, the later books are a bit too scary or whatever, but they've heard snippets of Harry Potter and they love it. And I made them these Harry Potter robes that they apparently, I haven't seen them since Christmas, but apparently they went down a storm. So I'm really pleased with those. And then last, but by no means least, the very last thing that I made in 2021 was this dress, which was my New Year's Eve dress. And it is a hack of the V9075 pattern. And I made it in this midnight cloquet fabric that I bought from the new craft house. So it's X designer dead stock fabric. And I hacked the pattern so that it would have an open back. It's got like a keyhole opening in the back. And I also adjusted the skirt. And I'm really pleased with it. I lined it um, so that the skirt is longer than the lining to, so that you can see the lovely kind of 
sheerness of the fabric and the sleeves are not lined so that you've got can see kind of the sheared effect there as well and I'm really pleased with it I don't think I got the fit spot on because the the fact that it's got the keyhole out the back changes kind of how the bodice holds itself together if you know what I mean but I think it's lovely. You're getting a sneak peek here actually because I haven't done a sew and tell video about the last few things that I've made. Um, but here they are. I'll probably do a more detailed video as well. But um, yeah, that's it. I felt very special indeed wearing this dress on New Year's Eve celebrating with my husband. So that's everything that I've made. It's funny, isn't it? Because I really go through phases in my sewing where I'll sew loads for a month or two and then I'll have a bit of a break and I'll be busy and I won't be able to. Um, and I never really have much of a sense of what my kind of sewing output is, but actually this is quite a long list of things that I've made. So I clearly have been productive. In terms of how it went, I am delighted that most of the vast majority of the projects that I made were really successful. Now, what I mean by successful is that I've worn them lots. They fit me well, they're pleasant to wear, the fabrics feel nice against my skin, and I can imagine myself wearing them for years to come. That, for me, is what it means to be a successful project. Even when it comes to the kind of less everyday makes, for example, my New Year's Eve dress, the reason I consider that still to be a success is because, although, of course, I'm not going to wear a dress like that, every week or even every month. It's the kind of dress that I can imagine myself for years to come, every time I've got a special occasion, I'll be really happy to consider that as, you know, a dress that I may wear. So, yeah, that's how I kind of think about the more special occasion sewing, is that I can make special occasion things, it's okay to have garments that I only wear for special occasions, but as long as they're good enough quality and well made and well fitted enough that I'm still going to want to wear it when I've got, I don't know, a winter wedding in two years time or a party later this year or whatever. The few projects that were not quite so successful that I haven't worn as much, so for example the lander pants and what else was there? A few other things. A few of those, oh the Olivia One Piece swimsuit, a few of those I will be able to do simple alterations to to make them much more wearable and hopefully that will then cause me to reach for them much more often so it's firmly at the top of my goals list for 2022 to try and tackle some of these alterations to yeah allow myself to get much more wear out of the garments that were not quite as instantly successful. I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about my sewing goals in general for 2022 because I've done that for the last few years and I think it's quite nice to hear about people's aspirations of how they want to approach their sewing. Um, they haven't really changed since the year before, it's all kind of similar themes coming through, but I have written myself a list. Um, well, firstly, I want to continue to use my bullet journal to track my makes. Um, I Well, let me know if you'd like to see a video on how I do this, because it's changed a little bit since I last did a video about how I use my bullet journal to record my sewing. But basically I keep like a master list at the front of all the list, all the um, makes that I've made and then I put the page number to my sort of detailed notes so I try to keep quite detailed notes during the making process so I can look back and remember well, what was that fabric that I used, what size did I cut out, what alterations did I make and that kind of thing. So I want to continue logging my makes in here and then let me just turn to my page that tells me all about my goals. Okay so as we've said I want to focus on refashions and alterations to maximise wear of less successful makes. This is always a focus but I want to focus on sewing through my stash. I did really well last year at containing my stash within one drawer and I kind of let it grow a little bit. It happened just like that within the last like month. <laughs> it doesn't all fit in the drawer anymore so I need to sew through some things. I'm not going to be buying any fabric for a good few months. Third thing is that I would like to continue focusing on ordering samples when I'm shopping online or shopping in person if I can. I find fabric shopping online difficult because you just don't know what you're going to get unless you order samples. So I'm, I've been ordering quite a lot of samples from Minerva just because they have a good sample service and I'm going to try and keep doing that because for me, fabric choice is so important and most of the garments that I don't wear so much 
like especially from my early days of dressmaking are where I haven't really got the the match right between the I haven't paired the right fabric with the right pattern etc so ordering a sample first to make sure that it is the right colour it is the right texture etc means that I'm going to be most happy with that end garment and the fabric's going to be what I'm expecting. I'm going to avoid sewing to deadlines or when I say that I mean I need to start sewing really far in advance for any deadlines because I hate sewing when I've got a deadline and when I'm up against a deadline. For example my New Year's Eve dress I ended up finishing it only the day before New Year's Eve and that for me gives me stress and I don't need any stress from my sewing because my sewing is a hobby. I do want to make a dress for my 30th birthday party which is in April this year so I'm going to start that dress probably in February because I just don't want it to be a rush and a stress. I want to make my husband a loungewear set. It actually was his Christmas present. I gave him the patterns and an IOU for the fabric. I'm just waiting for the fabric to be delivered and then that is an absolute must that must happen this year. I must follow through with the Christmas present and make my husband a loungewear set. I want to continue to be mindful with my sewing. I want to continue to think about whether it's a garment I'm actually gonna get lots of wear out of. Am I going to enjoy wearing it? Is the fabric good quality? Does it fit in with my style? Does it fit in with other things in my wardrobe? And just try and really focus on attempting to make garments that are gonna get lots of wear and that I'm gonna enjoy wearing. On that note, I want to focus on quality over quantity. Um, it's not about how many things I make, it's about the value that they add to my wardrobe. Um, and finally, I want to continue focusing on fitting. I made a really big effort over the last couple of years to learn about fitting, and I really think it's been transformational for my sewing. The final garments, just they just look so much better, they feel so much better. So I want to continue to really take my time. I want to make twirls, make adjustments, make another twirl if I need to, until I get the fit right, because that's the way I'm going to end up with garments that are going to stand the test of time. So there you have it, that is everything that I made during 2021 and a bit of a summary of my goals for 2022. Well done if you made it to the end of this video, I have a feeling it was probably quite a long one, but thank you ever so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more of my videos and I'll see you next time. Bye!